I wanted more in bed, so I cheated on my husband, but he hired a PI and ruined my life completely. Hey Reddit, first time posting here, but I've been on this platform for a pretty long time. I'm in a bit of a dilemma right now, and I genuinely do not know what to do. This whole thing still feels so wrong, but so right. And I'm going to use this post as a place to rant, so pardon me if this might get long. My name is Emily, and my husband's name is James. I am 28 years old, and James is 27. We've been married for about two years now. James and I had a seemingly perfect life. He was earning well, taking care of all the bills in the house, while I, on the other hand, was a model. I wasn't popular yet, and I was still trying to make my big break in the industry. James was very supportive of me, and even though I knew deep down he would have preferred I got an actual job instead of chasing this modeling dream of mine, he still tried his best to support me by taking care of the bills and taking care of everything else. Now James was an amazing person and an amazing spouse. He took great care of me. He paid for everything. He was honestly amazing, but there was only one problem. I was never really satisfied sexually with him. It wasn't that James was bad in bed, quite the contrary, he was attentive and passionate. However, I always found myself craving more intimacy and excitement, and I often felt unfulfilled despite his efforts. Maybe it's because I had a very high libido, while James had a pretty normal libido. I would prefer we had sex almost every day, while James was more of a three to four times a week kind of person. While we were dating, it wasn't something I really minded or complained about, because the main reason why I had initially dated James in the first place was that he looked like he had a secure future, and I really wanted to secure my life. James and I met in college. He was smart, bright, you know, the kind of kid that gets a scholarship and the kind of person you just know is really going to make it in life. While I was quite the opposite, I was wild, carefree, and always seeking excitement. That's why I was really attracted to James in the first place, because he was the opposite of everything I stood for, and he looked like he had everything put together. We dated for a while, and as time went on, I started noticing how responsible and dependable James was. Fast forward a few months, we moved in together, graduated, and James landed a very good job. After a few years, we got married, and like I said, James has always been an amazing partner. Things have been going great between us. We always have date nights. He puts in really good effort in our relationship. He takes care of me, and for a while, that was all I needed. However, as time passed, the lack of intimacy started to bother me. It wasn't that James was lacking in any way. He was attentive and loving. It was more about my own desires and needs, which seemed to be at odds with our current situation. I found myself craving more excitement, more passion, and more spontaneity in our physical relationship. And as much as I tried to push these thoughts aside, they kept creeping back into my mind. I just needed more passion, more spontaneity. The feeling of wanting to explore other people by opening our relationship started to nag at me relentlessly. It was a desire I knew would be a deal breaker for James, so I didn't even dare bring up the topic with him. James wasn't a fan of sharing or opening relationships. I tried distracting myself with new hobbies like painting and various other activities, hoping they would take my mind off these thoughts, but they only served to worsen the void I felt. To make matters worse, James and I hit a bit of a rough patch during this time. He gently suggested that I consider getting a job instead of staying at home all day. His words stung, even though he tried to say them in a caring manner. He implied that my modeling career wasn't taking off and that it might be time to move on from it. Modeling had been my dream since college, and I kept clinging to the hope that it would eventually flourish. James's doubts hurt me deeply. It felt like he saw me as a failure. Our arguments over this issue became frequent and heated. I strongly refused to give up on my dream and insisted that since James was managing the household and finances well, there was no need for me to work. However, as time passed, I realized that staying home was making me restless and bored, especially with the lack of modeling gigs. That's when I decided to take up a part-time job as a sales assistant in a fashion store. The pay wasn't huge, but I had the flexibility to set my own hours. James seemed pleased that I was no longer at home all day, seeing it as a positive change. It was during this job that I met Ryan. Ryan brought a new energy into my life, one that was fun and spontaneous. From the moment we met, it felt like we clicked effortlessly. We both worked at the same fashion store, but Ryan's charisma and talent set him apart. He had an eye for fashion like no other. Customers adored him, and he was often their go-to person for style advice. His popularity was well-deserved, given his knack for picking out the perfect outfit from a sea of options. Ryan could take one look at you and tell you what colors worked for you and what colors looked shitty on you. He was so talented he could pick out a real bag or a real piece of clothing in a sea of fakes. What especially drew me to Ryan besides his fashion sense was his kindness towards me. While he was friendly to everyone, I noticed he went the extra mile for me. 
During lunch breaks, he would surprise me with food, and on some days, he'd bring me coffee, knowing how much I loved it. His compliments were like a shot of confidence straight to my heart. He'd often remark on how good I looked, boosting my self-esteem in ways I hadn't felt in a long time. I found myself dressing up more not just for work but also to receive those encouraging words from Ryan. His compliments were very genuine and made me feel appreciated. Plus, it didn't hurt that he was incredibly handsome, which just made the whole thing better. As our bond deepened, some of our co-workers started to notice and jealousy crept in. But instead of feeling uncomfortable, I felt a sense of pride and happiness that out of everyone, Ryan chose to pay attention to me. Well, as you'd guess it, my friendship with Ryan turned into flirting and then flirting turned into something more serious pretty quickly. We weren't just being friendly anymore. There was a real spark between us that was hard to ignore. We'd joke around, laugh a lot, and share smiles across the room. We discovered that we had a lot in common and liked the same things, which made talking to each other even more exciting. We ended up exchanging phone numbers, and that's when things started to get out of control. I found myself becoming obsessed with Ryan. I was always on my phone, waiting for his messages and chatting with him constantly. I would smile and laugh at my phone obnoxiously because, to be honest, Ryan made me feel like a teenager again. And when James would notice and ask what was funny, I'd tell him nothing. It got to the point where I was ignoring everything else, including James. I was so focused on Ryan that I didn't even realize I was pushing James away. He noticed how distant I had become, and that was when he probably started to get suspicious. It was like I had built a wall between us, all because I was so wrapped up in this new infatuation with Ryan. As time went on, Ryan and I started going out more frequently. We'd catch a movie, grab dinner or lunch together, and just enjoy each other's company. It felt amazing to have a genuine friend, someone I could connect with on a deeper level. I've always been somewhat of a loner, so having Ryan around was like a breath of fresh air in my life. He was the first genuine friend I had after such a long time of being along. Despite the fact that both of us had initially agreed to keep things platonic, it became pretty clear that our feelings were growing beyond friendship. I knew Ryan wanted more, and truth be told, so did I. However, I was reluctant to even think about it because I was, of course, married. To ensure James remained in the dark about Ryan, I started turning off my location whenever we hung out. If James asked, I'd blame it on a glitch or network issue. It was a small lie, and why did I do it? because the thought of explaining to James sharing Ryan's existence with him felt like a breach of this newfound secret world I had with Ryan. Plus, I selfishly wanted Ryan all to myself, at least for a little while longer. Of course, James noticed the disconnect between us and tried to address it several times. He would sit me down, concerned, and ask what was going on with us. He wanted to understand why I seemed so distant and uninterested in our relationship. However, I would brush off his concerns and dismiss them as paranoia and insecurity. Whenever James brought up his worries, I would downplay them, telling him he was imagining things or overthinking. I reassured him that everything was fine between us, despite my actions that clearly said otherwise. I would deflect his questions and avoid any real discussion about the state of our relationship. This gaslighting behavior on my part only added to James's confusion and frustration. He knew something was off, but my denials and insistence that everything was okay prevented us from having honest conversations about our issues I'm pretty sure that's something that also worsened his suspicions. James tried everything to win me back. He planned romantic date nights, put effort into making our time together special, but I was too caught up in my affair with Ryan to notice or care. Whenever we were supposed to have quality time together, I would be constantly on the phone with Ryan, chatting away, oblivious to James's attempts to connect. Even during our movie nights, where we used to cuddle up and enjoy films together, I would be glued to my phone, engrossed in conversations with Ryan, ignoring both James and the movie playing in front of us. James would try to engage me in conversations, make jokes, or share something meaningful, but my attention was always diverted elsewhere. It became a pattern that I didn't notice then where James's efforts to rebuild our relationship were always met with my indifference. Well, after spending more and more time with Ryan, it became increasingly difficult to keep our relationship strictly platonic. I found myself drawn to him, his charm, his attention, and the excitement of something new and forbidden. And ironically, Ryan was in a relationship and had a girlfriend. Despite knowing that Ryan had a girlfriend, our interactions became increasingly intimate. We would often hang out at his place when his girlfriend wasn't around, watching movies, chatting, and flirting. Then came that fateful day when we finally crossed the line. I knew that it was eventually going to happen, and I knew I should have avoided Ryan, but I was feeling neglected and unfulfilled in my relationship with James, and Ryan's attention was like a magnet pulling me in. When he made a move, I didn't resist. 
I was just so caught up in the moment that I gave in. It was a betrayal of James's trust, and deep down I knew it was wrong. Of course, the guilt set in immediately after, and I was consumed by regret. For the next couple of days, I called in sick at work so as to avoid Ryan and just think about the consequences of my actions. There were moments when I considered coming clean to James, quitting my job, and starting afresh. But I knew the truth. I knew confessing to James would shatter our marriage forever. Besides, there was a part of me that knew that I had loved having sex with Ryan. Of course, I couldn't avoid going to work for so long, so I eventually had to resume. Ryan approached me and we started talking again. Despite the fact that I had promised myself that I would not do this again, I would bury it deep down, I would never tell James, and I would just avoid Ryan. But no matter how hard I tried to stay away from Ryan and bury my guilt, the attraction between us was just too strong. We ended up getting involved in a full-blown affair much faster than I thought possible. It was like in a movie, it all happened so fast. Even though I initially told myself I wouldn't give in to Ryan's advances, I couldn't resist. Despite all my attempts to reject him or keep my distance by rejecting him whenever he brought me food or coffee and even telling him we couldn't be friends anymore, his persistence and charm wore me down. The temptation was just too much, and before I knew it, we were having sex again. To avoid getting caught, we couldn't keep meeting at Ryan's place. Instead, we started booking hotel rooms. The first time we did this, I was so consumed with guilt and fear. What if James found out? What if he walked in on us? The shame was so overwhelming. But as we continued meeting in hotels, the guilt started to fade. It was replaced by this rush of excitement. As my affair with Ryan heated up, I started ignoring James more and more. I wasn't really tuned into him anymore. It's like he faded into the background while Ryan took the spotlight. Ryan made me feel incredible, like I was living a whole new life with so much passion and excitement. I got so caught up in Ryan that I stopped paying attention to James. Our conversations became surface level, and I didn't bother to dig deeper into his feelings or needs. It was like I put up a barrier between us, and Ryan was the only one who could get through. Even when James made efforts to connect or talk, I was too wrapped up in Ryan's world to notice or care. I was living in this thrilling fantasy with Ryan while my relationship with James slowly fell apart without me even realizing it. As Ryan and I kept meeting up in hotels away from town, I got too comfortable. I felt untouchable, like we were winning every round of this game we were playing. It became our routine to sneak away multiple times a week, and we always picked places where we wouldn't bump into anyone we knew. Just the other day, I met Ryan again, and we did our usual thing. We had lunch after work, then went to a hotel and lodged, had sex, and then I headed back home. Earlier that day, James had initially told me his car had some issues and he would like to use mine for the day. I didn't mind, so I agreed and Uber it to work. When I got home after hanging out with Ryan, the apartment was totally empty. I mean, not a single thing of James's was left. No clothes, no furniture, nothing. It was like he'd vanished into thin air. I was freaking out trying to call him, but he wasn't picking up. The landlord confirmed James had told him he was leaving the lease a month ago and that James had told him I was aware which totally blindsided me. I screamed at the landlord. I had no clue he was planning this. James and I were married. He couldn't just leave the lease. I hung up on the landlord and continued calling James in a panic. He finally texted me. He sent over pictures of me and Ryan, basically confirming he knew about the affair. It hit me like a ton of bricks. James called me out. He said I was never satisfied, that I had ignored him for months, and that he had to hire a private eye to uncover the truth. He said he was done. He wanted a divorce and he'd left the place for me to deal with. After James had told me that, he ignored all my other attempts to reach him. I completely lost it. I cried my eyes out for hours, just sitting there in our empty apartment. I was too much of a wreck to even dial a friend for comfort, except I didn't have any friends to call anyway, except Ryan. So here I am, pouring my heart out in this post, hoping for some advice on what to do. It's like a crazy movie, but this is my life now, and I'm struggling to make sense of it all. Everything has crumbled so fast and I feel so guilty and confused. I still have a bit of hope though, I wonder if there's any chance to patch things up with James. I still love him dearly and divorce is the last thing I want. But how do I fix this colossal mistake? Can I even earn back James's trust after betraying him like this? I also couldn't help but feel a bit of anger towards Ryan. I wanted to call him, to yell at him, to blame him for everything that had gone wrong. But I know deep down I caused a huge part in this mess. Update. Hey Reddit, I didn't plan on posting an update, but here I am. The response to my last post was overwhelming, to say the least. I've received a ton of negative comments and DMs. People slut-shaming me, 
hurling insults and saying I deserve what I got, saying I'm delusional and plain crazy. It's been a very rough ride and it got so bad that I avoided Reddit for a couple of weeks before mustering the courage to post this update. So here's what's been going on. First off, I lost my job. After James left and cleaned out our place without a word, I spiraled down, missed work for a week and got fired. Surprisingly, no one reached out, not even Ryan. At that point, I was still trying to fix things with James, so losing my job wasn't my top concern. But James is set on divorce. He's made it clear that forgiving me for months of cheating is off the table. He wants me to sign the papers when they come. Financially, I'm in a bind since James handled most bills and our rent is huge. My options were to either get a roommate or move back in with my parents. I reached out to my parents, but they're not keen on me moving back in, given what James told them. They said they don't want me influencing my younger siblings. Tough love, I guess. I'm low contact with them for a reason. As for Ryan, when I reached out to him, he apologized for not initiating contact ever since, and then he ended our friendship. He did explain why, though. He said that James had contacted his girlfriend and shared the photos, which made her give him an ultimatum to either cut ties with me or she would leave him. Ryan said he thought about it for a while and realized that he loved his girlfriend, but I was just a fling, so he was making the difficult decision to cut me off. So here I am, looking for a roommate and bracing for divorce. I'd still go back to James if he changed his mind, but I'm not holding my breath. I'm facing the consequences and soldiering through. I know some of you will revel in this update thinking I got what I deserved and that's okay. I'm owning up to my mistakes and taking each day as it comes. Update. Hey everyone, here's an update, although it's probably not the one I was hoping for. I found myself in a bit of a tight spot and I'm navigating through it as best as I can. I got served, which means court is coming soon and that means I need to find a lawyer. The challenge? Affordable legal representation is hard to come by these days and the costs are just crazy. To handle the financial strain, I've started looking for a second job. This time I'm aiming for something that pays better because I genuinely need the money. On top of that, I'm still on the hunt for a roommate and a more affordable place to live. Unfortunately, the housing crisis has made it incredibly tough to find a suitable place within my budget and I'm feeling a bit stuck. This might be my last update here because the comments and feedback I've received have been less than supportive. It's been really sad with the rude, demeaning, and mocking comments that I get. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a while since I last posted. I know I said that would be my final update, but I felt it was important to share how things wrapped up. So we went to court and surprisingly, it was quite quick. There wasn't much to divide and we settled things pretty swiftly. However, that didn't stop the flood of emotions I felt afterward. My constant neglect and disregard for my bond with James pushed James away. I had to go to the bathroom because I started crying. It hit me so hard that I had lost James and our life together. I never wanted a divorce, and the reality of it all was very difficult to accept. It felt like I was the only one who truly lost something meaningful in this whole ordeal. Meanwhile, Ryan gets to continue his life with his girlfriend, seemingly unaffected by our affair. On the job front, I'm still searching for a second job. The job market is tough and landing something that pays well has been a challenge. Additionally, I haven't had any luck finding a more affordable apartment or a roommate. The money I had saved up is dwindling fast, especially since James cleared out our joint account when he left. He did leave me a portion, which I appreciate considering our circumstances. Living off that money has been a temporary relief, but without a stable income, I'm facing the very real possibility of homelessness. It's a scary possibility, especially since I don't have any friends to turn to for help. My parents have made it clear they don't want me back home, so I'm navigating this all on my own. This update will likely be my last. The comments and feedback here have been really negative, with no sympathy or understanding. It's been a very tough journey, but I appreciate the few support I did receive along the way. Thank you all for everything. My name is Miranda, female, 30 years. But my father used to call me Mimi and my husband, or let me say my ex-husband is Richard, male, 35 years. We met at home. I don't know if you will understand if I say it like that. Well, Richard had come to my house to deliver some documents that my father needed because he was working at home that day since my mother was not feeling well. He came to our house and asked where my father was. I didn't answer him at first because I had just zoned out the time I opened the door for him. I think he saw that I had zoned out and he just let himself in. That was when I managed to bring my mind back to reality. I was charmed by his handsomeness, his body posture, the way he dressed, one would swear he was a model or something, and not to mention when he opened his mouth. I just melted and zoned out on the spot. So I followed him and told him that my father was busy, but he could leave whatever he had brought to me of which he refused, 
and told me that he needed to give them to my father. Luckily, father came down and took the documents that he had. Then he introduced us. I was 24 years old and he was 29, I think. Father saw the way I was looking at Richard and told me to stay away from him and should focus at school, not on boys. I first didn't understand why my father would say that, but with my stubborn self, I didn't listen. Instead, I would go to my father's practice and pretend like I was going to check on my father whenever I came from school, knowing very well that sometimes my father would work at home because he didn't want to leave my mother alone and he didn't want any helper, knowing very well that I was actually looking for Richard. He noticed that when I had come maybe for like three times at my father's practice, pretending to be looking for him while knowing that he was home taking care of my mother. He asked why I kept coming to the office while I knew that my father was working from home. I told him that I didn't know that he was at home. I thought he had come to work to operate someone maybe, because he would only go to work if there was a patient that needed his special operation and their condition was serious. I knew that he didn't believe my lie, but I didn't care because I wouldn't tell a guy that I had come to see them. So the guy just suggested that I should give him my contact number so he can tell me when my father would be available so that I won't keep coming to the office for nothing. I didn't ask him many questions. I just gave him my numbers and he gave me a call later that day saying he was just checking up on me. My heart was filled with so much joy when he called. Since then he kept checking up on me either through calls or text messages. We became pretty close, well privately because we didn't want my father to find out that I was a friend of his personal assistant since he had warned me to stay away from him. You know how us girls get when we are told to stay away from someone or trouble. We just don't listen and go to the trouble or someone we had been warned about thinking that what your father told you was not true. We always want to prove our parents wrong by their speculations. But I guess mine was not wrong after all and I regretted not listening to him. Anyway, a couple of months as Richard and I kept spending time together, we got closer and closer until I knew that I had developed feelings for the guy. I mean, he was treating me like a princess. He wouldn't go a day without checking up on me, taking me out every week and fetching me from school. Richard became my friend, my source of happiness. I was happy with him, I won't lie. And he would always manage to make my dull day gloomy without trying so hard. The more we spent time together, the more I saw him as a person who I wished to spend my life and have children with. He was funny, loving, caring, and very supportive. So you wouldn't fall for a person like that. He gave me so much attention. He once told me that he was born in Chicago and moved to Broadview Hills here in Ohio after his family was gunned down by some gangsters. His story was really heartbreaking, but despite everything I loved about him, he told me that he wasn't perfect and I should expect that he might make mistakes along the way, but that won't mean he didn't love me. Six or seven months later, I don't remember well, he proposed. I had told my father that I was dating him and he didn't approve of our relationship but he had no choice but to accept things as they were because a heart knows what it wants right, and it wants Richard. We got married during summer holidays after my graduation at Hood School of Acting. My father was not really okay with me getting married at 25, but I made him understand that the decision I had taken was what my heart wanted. Things were great between us. Our marriage was what I can say a dream marriage life. He was perfect, we were perfect, you know. I didn't even get any doubt feeling about us. I had thought we were going to spend our whole lives together, but I guess life always has other plans for everyone, right? My mother had recovered, meaning my father had gone back to be hands-on with his practice. A year later after our marriage, we were still very much in love, and the love grew more and more, especially when we discovered that I was pregnant. We were so happy, you know. My heart still bleeds when I think of how much hope and faith I had put into that marriage, only for it to just end like it had never even started. It went down the drain like ashes being washed away by the sea. Nine months later, I gave birth to the most precious and beautiful twins. I was so happy and in so much love with them. That time I knew I had been blessed with everything in life. I mean, I had the most loving, supportive and caring husband and the most beautiful babies. What more would I have asked for? You know, sometimes being a housewife is somehow boring because you just don't do anything besides cleaning, washing and cooking. I miss my life, you know. Plus, my husband had suddenly become busy at work, so most of the time he wasn't home till late. The twins were a great distraction for me because I would have been lonely to death if they were not there. They brought so much joy and happiness in my heart to a point that I even didn't care much about Richard's sudden behavior. Just as long as they were there, my heart was at peace. About two or three years later, Richard started changing for the worst. He would go out a lot, saying he was going out with his friends and came back home very late. I knew his knockoff time since he was working for my father, 
Well, my father eventually accepted him as his son-in-law, and he allowed him to continue being his assistant because he trusted him, even though it wasn't fully, but he did trust him. The children would always complain that their daddy was no longer spending much time with them, and that would always break my heart because I didn't know what lie I would tell my children. I tried addressing that issue with Richard and begged him to at least show some love and attention to children because they were noticing that their father had changed. And to their little smart minds, they thought their daddy didn't love them anymore. Only if I knew that the bastard was actually on a mission to destroy my family and take away my rights. He promised to change and told me a lame and lousy excuse that my father was giving him so much work. So that was why he would come back late because he didn't want any destruction and would leave the office before he gets done with everything. He became the father that my children wanted for a couple of weeks until he changed and went back to his old self. I didn't know what to do anymore, so I told my father what had been happening in my marriage. I had a glimpse of hope that my father would be able to get through him and become the husband to me and a father to our children since Richard respected my father, as he said he was or pretended to be respectful towards my father. I gave all my hope to my father, but the man didn't change everything that he was doing. He made them worse, from coming home very late and going out a lot with his friends. He became the person I didn't know and couldn't recognize. He was no longer coming back home, and came back home with a lousy excuse that he had slept at his friend's house. They had a lot to drink, so he ended up spending the night there. So as a qualified actress, I had learned about people's postures and body languages. I knew when a person was lying and Richard was lying straight to my face. After some time, I saw that there was no change in his behavior. I took my children to my parents' house, not because I wanted to try and fix my marriage with Richard, but I wanted to find out about his behavior. My conscience was telling me that he was doing something that he knew I wouldn't approve of or something that would jeopardize our marriage. Cheating was the first thing that came to my mind when he started going out a lot and not coming back home or even trying to spend some time with our children. Something was definitely offish with him and I knew I needed to find out what it was. You know, sometimes hiring a private investigator for your husband can be too extreme because it questions your marriage, loyalty, and trust between two married people. So I decided to just stay in the house and observe him. It was easy because the kinds were not there wanting my attention. Most of the time I would order in, not because I was too lazy to cook or anything, but because I got tired of cooking for someone who never notices my efforts and at least eats my food or takes it to work. It was really a waste of energy and food. I couldn't shake off the feeling that he was doing something that would definitely jeopardize our marriage. Things got too bad to a point that I was no different than single mothers. My husband was there, but he was not there. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Everything was just too much for me to bear. The children were so handful and would sometimes ask for their father and I had to lie for him every single day. You know the pain of having to lie to your children telling them that their father was busy at work? even when you know deep down that he knocks off early and goes to wherever he spends most of his time with whoever he was spending time with. I loved my husband, but what he was doing to me was really what I never signed up for, and I needed to know what he was getting up to before I jumped into conclusions. I didn't even want to tell my parents about my marital problems until I knew what had been happening with the person I had married. One thing I will forever be grateful for that Richard had given me would be my children. You know, on that one, he gave me the most precious and priceless gift ever. I don't regret loving him because till today I still have some feelings for him, but I regret being the one who approached him as a cheap and easy woman. He took that as an advantage and used me to get what he wanted. It took me a very long time to realize that I was actually being played, but guess who won at the end? So one day when I was chilling in my house going through the internet checking jobs that I can do while I'm staying at home, I decided to order some pizza to munch while searching for remote jobs. About an hour later, the delivery was at my doorstep. You know when you just take something that is delivered and not look who delivered it because you are bus glued on our phone. My consciousness was brought back to earth when the delivery guy greeted me and told me that I didn't pay on the app. I had even forgotten that I chose to pay on delivery. You know when I lifted my eyes up, I saw this baby face looking guy and oh my God, he was so handsome. I didn't even know that there were such handsome delivery guys nowadays. The delivery guy asked for water so I invited him inside. When I had to give him his water, something tripped me and I almost fell. Luckily, the handsome, slim fit delivery guy caught me on time. Mind you, that time I had only a body on, so the time I fell on him. It also untied itself and boom, my underwear was revealed in front of a handsome and yummy stranger. We found ourselves lost in each other's eyes, you know. You know when they say there is love at first sight? Well, to me, it was lust at first sight. You know when you are way too close with a person to a point that your nasty mind tells you just either shoot your shot or kiss the guy. 
I don't know what was happening between me and the delivery guy, but the chemistry was there, you know. There was this attachment or connection that we had that I cannot even put a hand on it or even try to explain. You know when you have that long lost lover and after years you find each other and the love loss gets renewed again. That was how I felt with the delivery guy. I couldn't hold myself any longer. I ended up smashing my lips on his and fortunately he accepted it. Everything just happened too fast because one minute we were kissing and the other we were making out on a couch. Slutty move I know, but do you blame me I couldn't resist it. So that was how our thing started. Sometimes we would meet at my house if my husband was not around or meet at a guest house because hotels are not so private and anyone can see you walking in and out of it. The delivery guy introduced himself as Charlie Hirayama, male, 31 years. Yes, you guessed right, he was a half Indian and half Caucasian, meaning he was a mixed breed. Our thing started off as an unusual thing, or let me say an unusual moment of weakness. Then we found ourselves forming an affair in a most unexpected way. So one day Charlie had invited me to have a chill out with him and his friends. I agreed to the invitation. I just couldn't stay with Richard that weekend, and his behavior was making me angry. I wanted him to change, but I think he didn't want to. He loved how he was. So Charlie and myself, after the chill out with his friends, we went to his flat and we ended up spending the night together. With Charlie, I always felt free, like I was myself. And I also felt a sense of excitement and validation, but also guilt and shame because I went against Richard's disapproval. I knew that I had crossed a line and that there was no going back. I know it was wrong of me, but I couldn't help it. Richard was no longer doing it the way he was doing it before. It was like his ego and nonchalant behavior had somehow gotten into his head and it was making him look like a crazy person or a person with bipolar disorder. He was very calm, but when he got angry, even the house would be on fire. So I would always try by all means to keep the peace between us. On the other hand, Charlie was making me feel completely happy and he knew how to take responsibility for his actions. Richard knew how to apologize when he was wrong and would make sure that he takes the blame as it is. I didn't know that in my relationship with Richard, the last time Richard had uttered the word, I'm sorry. Instead of doing that, he would either deny or shift the blame on me or someone else. He didn't have the guts to say I'm sorry. Spending time with Charlie made me feel at ease. I felt a sense of belonging, and he understood me and my needs. I know I shouldn't have fallen for a person who was a delivery guy, but I couldn't help it. Charlie had once confessed his love for me before, but I was so much in love with Richard, so I kept rejecting him and told him that I didn't see him in that manner, but I saw him as a person who knows what I need and want, and fulfilling those gaps that I had in my life. Charlie became my best friend in a much unexpected way. We would talk about anything and everything, and I would even tell him about my shame of marriage. I was happy that he didn't judge me or give me advice to divorce my husband, but I guess the phrase that says marry your best friend was somehow true, well, because I never really believed in such phrases. I only believed in my heart that if it loves someone, we can be in love with them or even marry them. The next day I tried to act normal around Richard, but I couldn't shake the feeling that he knew something was wrong. Richard, being as nonchalant as ever, didn't seem to notice anything amiss. So my guilt and anxiety grew with each passing day. I didn't know what to do with myself, but I knew that I had to act normal. Eventually I couldn't bear the weight of my secret any longer. I had to come clean to Jake. At least he deserved that and see how he would react to the situation. So I confessed to Richard what I had done and told him that it was purely a mistake and it wasn't my intention to betray him like I did. Richard was devastated. I know that he was a nonchalant person, but he had feelings so I knew that I had hurt him with what I had done. I know that he had always been confident in our marriage relationship and never suspected that I would cheat on him. That was how much he trusted me, even with his behavior. He still gave me my place as his partner. As much as he looked devastated, but the answer he gave me was not what I was actually looking for. You know when you decide to come clean to your partner just because you feel guilty and remorseful of what you have done? You expect your partner to act ballistic and maybe explode like a bomb. I had expected him to be angry at me, shout at me, or even break things if he had to, but the buster just gave me an okay. That frustrated and infuriated me because it wasn't the reaction I had been expecting and hoping for. I asked myself the whole day if Richard still loved me, and why would he give me a simple and dry okay after I had confessed my sins to him? Since then, Richard moved out of our house without any explanation or proper talk, which I think was a bit too much and childish. He shouldn't have moved out, you know. I was heartbroken and filled with regret. I realized that cheating on Richard had been a huge mistake. I had expected so much from Richard, but he had shown me that he still had the mind of a child. 
I won't lie and say I didn't miss him because I did, and I had tried calling him to come back home. I had even gone to my parents' house to fetch the kids, thinking that he would at least come back to his senses and come back home. It took him more than six months for Richard to move back in. I had got back with Charlie because I was way too lonely, and I needed some vitamin D in my life. Charlie was there when I was in my lowest low. He, Charlie, gave me everything that I had wanted and fulfilled my desires. One day I had ordered pizza, and to my luck or unlucky, the pizza was delivered by Charlie. You know how kids like to see who comes in the house and check whatever thing that you do. So that day Charlie came in not minding the company that we had, so he kissed me and one twin spoke which was when he realized that I had my kids over. The room became too small for all of us, and I knew that my babies had loud mouths, so I was sure that they would tell their daddy what had happened. Charlie had to bribe them with money so that they would not snitch. I knew that I had to make introductions of which I didn't know what I would call Charlie, but I ended up settling to call him a friend of which Charlie was not exactly happy about it, but I couldn't care less, and I had to save myself from my kids and their loose mouth. So one day as I was coming back from the shops, I received a call from my mother telling me that my father had got involved in a car accident when he just left his workplace going home. At that time, Richard had come back being the best husband and father to me and our children. As much as he was trying, I was happy, but I couldn't trust him anymore. You know, staying in one house and sharing one bed with someone you do not trust is a very dangerous and poisonous pill to take. As I was going through the phase of being stressed about my father, Richard had taken over from my father since he was his assistant, meaning he knew a lot around the company and my father's duties. I ended up finding solace in Charlie. We were meeting in our secret location, a guest house not far from my house. Charlie was actually a very good destruction at that time. He was what I needed. So after our lovemaking session, well, a lot of lovemaking sessions, we decided to order in because we had planned to spend the night at the guest house. As we were still waiting for the pizza that we had ordered, Charlie saw that it was taking its own sweet time to be delivered, so he suggested we go to the pizza restaurant and take the order himself, because he was on duty when he came to the guest house. As I have said before, Charlie knew me, he knew my happy and joyful mood, and he knew when I was not in a right state of mind or going through something or sad. When I called him, he was the one who suggested that we go to the guest house. Later on, there was a knock at the door. In my mind, I had thought that maybe it was the first delivery guy. That time, Charlie was back with our food and another thing we had forgotten to cancel the other order because we were so caught up in our bubble. So I went to get the door while Charlie was in a small kitchenette dishing out food. Mind you, we were on our underwear. Well, I had my lingerie on while Charlie was in his briefs. When I opened the door, I saw this handsome guy. He told me that he was there to deliver my order and even apologized for the delay. I took the box of pizza, and as I was about to close the door, the man asked for water saying that he had lost direction to the guest house, so it took all of his energy. With my kind gesture, I asked the guy to come in so I could give him the water that he had asked for. I went to the kitchen and poured him cold water, but when I turned to give him his water, I got the shock of my life. You know when you get a shock that is very extreme to a point that you even feel your heart stop beating for a moment. Mouth goes dry, my palms and forehead sweat like I was running a marathon. Even the breathing pace changed. It was like I was running a 50 kilometers race in an hour. Charlie had gone back to the room that we were in, so he came back to fetch me saying that my food was getting cold. He found me in the statue position, not moving or anything. I was just lost for words and didn't know how I should feel. Charlie greeted the man, then asked why I looked like I had seen a ghost. You know when your mouth is dry and no voice is coming out. I wanted to tell him that the person in front of us was my husband, but I couldn't tell him because I had somehow lost the sense of speaking. Richard asked why I was so spooked as if I had never seen my husband before. That had Charlie's attention and confusion was written all over his face. Yes, Charlie knew that I was married, but he didn't know what my husband looked like. When I finally gained myself a bit of strength, I asked Richard why he was there and where the kids were. He told me that the kids were at my parents' house with my mother, of course, since my father was in hospital. I tried to reason with him, but he didn't want to hear anything that came out of my mouth. He bluntly told me that he just wanted to know why I had been acting fishy lately and why I had been absent to our children. He then told me that the twins had told him about a man that came to our house and kissed me. You know when you have been caught red-handed, and there is no way to deny or hide because the truth is out there. I felt so stupid to even think that Richard wouldn't find out about my abomination because my husband, or must I say my ex-husband was a very calculative man and he was analytic. 
He was the kind of man that would just look at you doing your own thing and act like he wasn't there and he didn't see anything while he knew everything. I tried to apologize to my husband and beg him to forgive me while on the other hand, Charlie wanted me to explain to him who my husband was. I didn't know that I should have explained anything to Charlie because he knew that I was married. So instead of answering Charlie's question, I asked him to go. But instead, Richard announced that he was the one who was going and we should continue with what we were doing. He even apologized for disturbing us as you can imagine and told me that I would find him home. I couldn't believe that my own husband who claimed to love me in front of our families, friends, the priest, and even God himself would actually do that to me like that. Why would he set up a fake handsome delivery guy just to prove a point? I just didn't understand him. What he did was somehow creepy and nasty. I couldn't even continue with the plans that we had with Charlie for the night. I just ran after Richard only to find him gone. So I had to take my car and follow him home. I didn't know what was waiting for me, but I was prepared for anything that would happen because I mean, I was the one at fault and I deserved every punishment that I could get. A few days later, the doctor called me and told me that my father wanted to speak to me. I didn't know why he wanted to speak to me instead of fighting and going back home to mom, but I went to his ward. He told me that he knew about everything that was happening in my house and Richard had been acting fishy at work before his accident. So he decided to do an investigation on him because he acted suspicious. So during his own research, he found out that Richard actually had a fiance back in Chicago, whom he left her pregnant and came here to make money or to scam more people so he can go back to his hometown and take his fiance and relocate to another state. So Richard found out about what my father had discovered. So he tempered with my father's car tires because my father wanted to take the evidence he had found and take it to the OPD, Ohio Police Department. That was when my father got into that accident. My father then said to me, Please make sure that you take good care of my assets, my practice and everything because your greedy and manipulative husband had tried to trick me to sign off everything, including my house to him. Luckily, I had already called my lawyer to change everything and asked for a fake form similar to the one that Richard wanted to trick him with and signed it. I just couldn't believe my ears. How could one person be so heartless and manipulative? Meaning that Richard thought he had won, but he didn't do his research and he was the dumbest person I had ever come across, though I still had some love for him. My father had always been warning me, but I was too blinded by love to a point that I didn't even see when I was putting myself in danger. And the worst part was that Richard even gave me kids while he knew that he was in my life for a mission. I felt so dumb and stupid, and to even think that I actually still love him makes me look like a beggar for unreal love. I had developed some love and hate for my husband. I was no longer comfortable and free around him. Is that even normal? After a couple of days, my father passed on and it was the hardest moment of my life. After my father's funeral and the reading of his will, Richard actually came to me and asked to speak to me. You know, when you look at the person you despise and you would feel like puking, that was how I felt for Richard. I didn't know why he was not filing for divorce already. So he told me that the house my father had left for me or thought he had left for me was his. My eyes widened in disbelief and a moment of silence hung in the air. Then, unexpectedly, I burst into laughter. I just couldn't help it, you know because I had thought he was going to change his statement and say he was joking, but he wasn't. I didn't know that my husband would stoop so low and want to take over someone else's house. It was just hilarious. Richard looked at me, perplexed by my reaction. He got confused by my sudden outburst laugh, which made him look like a fool and got angry. He unleashed his true colors, the rage that was visible in his eyes. I saw a different side of him and it was somehow scary because I didn't know what he would do either to me or the kids or even my mother since he became so obsessed in taking my inherited house. He became a whole different person and I really thought of the worst but instead he just went away to only God knew where he went to. A week later reality started kicking in. I missed and needed my father and his advice but the bustard that I had married decided to act God in my father's life. The house was in so much peace without him in the house even though the kids ask about him but I would tell them that he had gone to a business trip. Two weeks later, I had filed for a divorce and for a restraining order because Richard kept calling me and coming to my family home acting all psycho to a point that even the kids got scared of him. I also handed over the evidence that my father had discovered during his investigation. Luckily, the investigation regarding my father's accident was still ongoing, so it was easy to bring Richard down. My mother found me a therapist that did house calls and I was grateful for that because I didn't want to face the world, you know. I was going through a very rough patch. I was not coping at all. I was somehow scared that Richard would see me or temper with my car tires also like he did to my father. I couldn't leave my kids alone. 
Richard was arrested and sentenced to 25 years in prison for murder and another 25 years for scamming a businessman in Chicago. And other charges came up when the police continued with the investigation. I was so relieved that he was finally away from me and my family, and I had vowed to never ever think I know better. Please tell me if what decisions I had made were good moves. I mean, half of my heart still loves the guy, but the other hates him with passion. My children sometimes want to visit him in prison, but I do not allow them because I do not want anything to do with Richard. What should I do? Please tip me here because I am lost and I don't know what to do.